All right, so we are in Algebra 1. Today's date is Wednesday, January 29th, 2020. We are in Lesson 7-5, simplifying square roots now with variables. And then tomorrow is going to be that penultimate level, 7-6, where we simplify square roots with expression. So our objective today is to, why it had it first? Remove perfect square integers and perfect square variables from the square root. There it is. So it's just one more additional step. Question, Charles? Oh yeah, so make sure that everyone knows what an inverse operation is. If I have anything and I square it, and then I square root it on top of that, I'm left with what, Charles? Just anything. Anything. And most mathematicians see this as a slightly different rule. They'll usually write something like, if you have an x, and x represents anything, and I square that anything, and I square root that anything, it turns back into normal x. So I could have written that rule. I feel like it's a little bit more easy to understand if I write the word anything, but yeah, a variable could hold anything. It's just a container. So I want you guys to really pay attention to this logic. I wanted you to write this all out, but I feel that if, as long as you're paying attention, you'll understand what's happening here. So first of all, 360. If I made a factor tree for 360, these would be the ends of the branches, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 5. If you don't believe me, you can make a factor tree out to the left hand side and then you would come to the same conclusion. But we can all nod our heads. Two, 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 three, five, or three twos, and then three fives, or three, three, five. We're all okay. And then I'm going to simplify that. I'm going to condense that. And you might be saying, well, why don't you do two to the power of three here? Because there's three twos. I could have. But I'm choosing to do it this way because I'm looking for squares. The whole idea of today's lesson is look for the squares. Look for those perfect squares. So there's the perfect square. Uh, not there. There's the perfect square. Uh, not there. So everyone sees the perfect square. And then I'm just going to break that apart. So it's the same line, but now in four different square roots. We're all OK. We nod our heads. We see what's going on. We connect the lines. And then from there, again, whenever I have the square root of a square, the square root of a square, I'm going to get rid of the square and get rid of the square root. And this 2, or the square root of 2 to the power of 2 is going to turn back into 2. These two are the same number. OK. Yeah. We're all OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that falls for the 3 as well. And then I combine everything to 6 square root of 10. Why are you doing that? Why am I showing you all this work? Ooh, like, why are you doing all that? Work? I'm showing you all that work because it's now going to have to apply that same rule to variables. Eventually, I want to teach you the procedure. So I don't want to skip right to the procedure because that procedure wouldn't make sense. Like, why are we dividing the variable exponent by 2? So this is the, I'm trying to show you the rationale of the procedure, and then we'll get to the procedure. But, like, what are you trying to get by doing the I want you to be able to solve problems that look like that. What do I do with a to the power of 6? How do I take the square root of a to the power of 6? <laughs> right, and I'll show you a cool little trick in order to solve it. I'm glad that so many people already know, but I want to show you the entire chain of logic. So I want to do a slightly different problem. 128, that's 2 to the power of 7. There's 7 twos. But I don't want to think of it as 2 to the power of 7. I'm going to do 2 to the power of 6 times 2 because this is an even number. Even numbers are super powerful when we're trying to take square roots because I can rewrite 2 to the power of 6 as 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 2 because using your rules of exponents, when I have a power to the power, what operation do I do? You guys will all shout out. Multiply. Multiply, exactly. So these are equivalent. And now that I have a square, I have a square here, a square root of a square, those cancel out and I'm left with 2 to the power of 3. That's what we're going to be doing with variables. I'm going to be looking for even powers, then I'm going to rewrite it as a power of 2, and then I'm going to be able to take the square root. That's cool. Yeah, Emma. So if you already have 2, two to 6 times 2, and it would look good if it was 2 to the power of 1, is that why it's just 2 to the power of 6 times 2? If you have 2, two to the power of 7. Yeah, so I had 2 to the power of 7, and I turn it into this one because I need to, like, I don't like the odd power. It's hard to say if this is, I can't write it as a, um, as factors, 3 times 2. I want, I want to write this power as something times 2. So I get rid of one of the 2s, I split it up, and now it's an even power that I can split it up. I don't know if I answered your question, though. Yeah. Okay, and then, yeah, Kira. 8 to the square root of 2 is equal yeah, it's equivalent to 128. It is yes. square root. If you type both these in your calculator, you'll get the same exact estimate. That's 
right, so now our, pen, our like final step now, I'm doing the same logic now with variables. So with variables, we're still paying attention. This is basically a, an example problem that I might have given you. If I gave you 72x to the power of 9, you should be able to tell me that 6x to the power of 4 times the square root of 2x. Here's the chain of logic that you use. Well, 72 is the same thing as 36 times 2. You can all nod your heads, 36 times 2. And then x to the power of 9, I don't like odd powers. Odd powers, I can't write that as something times 2, but I can separate it as x to the power of 8 times x. Now it's an even power, which means if it's an even power, I can say it's x to the power of 4 to the power of 2. Okay. And now the square root and the square, these two should cancel each other out, and I'm left with x to the power of 4. So 6 came from the square root of 36. The square root of 36, the square root of 36 turned into 6. So x, I had x to the power of 9. I split it up so one of the x's is by itself. Really here, I have x to the power of 1. 1 plus 8 is 9. So from there, I'm leaving that x. Whenever you have that x by itself, it's always going to be a square root. From there on out, it's going to be the square root of x turns into the square root of x. Leave it as a square root of x, and I'll still have the square root of x on the inside. So if I ever have an odd power, I'm going to be stuck on the inside of the square root. All right, are you guys? So you did the square root of how did you get six? Did you like you did the square root of two? All right, so it oh, should have been. Oh, 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 never mind, never mind. Okay, yeah, just trying to use our quieter hands. Thank you, Kira. Oh, sorry. Oh, Kira, yeah, oh, okay. Um, I don't really, like, could you solve one of the ones without a variable backwards to get to the first number? Um, yeah, that coefficient, like using like, our old methods. Could you get from 8 to the square root of 2 to 120? Yes, you could. So how do you go backwards? And I'll show you. It's kind of a cool question. So if I square 8 and square root it, 8 squared is? Uh, 64. So now I can rewrite this thing as the square root of 64, right? The square root of 64 is 8, and I still have to multiply by 2, or square root of 2. And then since they're both square roots, I can keep them as the square root of 64 times 2, and this 64 times 2 is 1 for 8. Oh, so why did you just put that square there for the 8 and the square root? Like, where did you get those? So oh, never mind, never mind, I get it. You just, because it's a eight squared in a square root, so those just went away. Exactly. I can add a square root square root. And then when you're square. solving it, you just put it back. Yep. Which means there was a shortcut to get from a square root of 128 to here. I should have just written this as square root of 64 times the square root of 2 instead of 2 to the power of 6. 2 to the power of 6 is 64. All right. I'm about to show you the procedure. So if anything up here is still not making sense, I can boil it down into a procedure. But I'm hoping that every single one of us at least has a basic understanding of why I'm looking for even powers instead of odd powers. I don't like odd powers because I can't write it to the power of 2. When I have it to the power of 2, then I can undo it by taking a square root. So here we go. Our new procedure is to use your factor tree to simplify the coefficient. Just the same thing as before. So in our new problem, I'm going to have the coefficient of 56. Ignore the y to the power of 11 for now. Just the 56. It's the same thing that we're doing yesterday. Make your factor tree exact same procedure. But now to solve for y to the power of 11, what am I going to do? I'm going to separate that variable so that it has an even power. I'm going to separate this into y to the power of 10 times y. y to the power of 10 is the even. And then from there, I can take half of y to the power of 10 or like divide the variable of the exponent by 2. So it was y to the power of 10, and then divide 10 by 2, and it's y to the power of 5, and I can bring that outside of the square root. So let's go ahead and do this. Is there a quiet raised hand that can do example number 1 for us? Yeah, Eamon. Um, well, um, I was just... Okay. I, I'm seeing 29... Let's do the square root of uh, 2 times 29 Ooh. times y to the 10th times y. Um, 29 would be 58. You're really, really close. Oh, um, hold on. It's uh, 29 times 2 
28. Perfect. 28. And then you said this was y to the 10, y to the 1? Yes. Yep, exactly. So I'm going to do that step at the very end. I'll have some square roots there. I know this is going to be y to the power of 10 times y to the power of 1. Thank you, Eamon. Did you want to continue the factory tree or let someone else finish it? I'll let someone else finish it. All right. Who has a card, Jade? 2 and 14. Square root of 2, square root of 14. All right, perfect. So there's our factor tree. Let's go ahead and pair it up. Again, whenever you have a pair of numbers, that means it goes outside the square root. So I have a pair of twos right here and no other pairs. So when I'm writing my answer, I have a pair of twos, so that comes outside the square root since square root of two times the square root of two is the square root of four and the square root of four is two. I'm skipping some steps here and I'm getting some confused eyes, so let me not skip those steps. Let me <laughs> rewrite that yellow thing as the square root of four. The square root of two times the square root of two is the square root of four. And I'm gonna rewrite all of this other blue stuff, square root of two, square root of seven. So square root of two and square root of seven. I've written all of the ends of my branches up here. And I've also have this square root of y to the 10 times y to the 1. Question, Emma. Um, where did you get the 4 from? Did you just multiply the 2's together? Yeah, whenever you have the pair of 2's, you're really just multiplying those together. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is the square root of 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And then that should be simplified next. So if I'm simplifying this line, is there anyone that wants to go down a line who has their card preferably? Here, yeah. Okay, so the square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. And then you can combine the 4 and the 7, since they're both under a square. So it's 2 times the square root of 14, and then the square root of y of 10 times y of the 1. Perfect. I'm going to separate that into two different square roots, if that's okay. Yeah. Y of the 10 is being square rooted. Ooh, and I'm going to do an additional step, too. So it, is, it should be y to the 10 here. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to come back here and fill this in in a second. And this is going to be times the square root of y, or y to the 1. So instead of writing 10, I'm going to do what? Something to the power. It needs. To, I need to have a 2, right? I need to have some sort of 2. That way I can take the square root and get rid of that 2. Right now I have a 10. Is there anyone that has a car that can do this? Yeah, Ulysses. So you put y, 10, 5, to the 15, 10, 5. There it is. Y to the power of 5 to the power of 2, precisely. And now our square root and square can cancel each other out. So this square root is gone. That 2 is gone. Who can read our final answer? We're basically done. We just need to squish it all together. All the non-square roots on the outside. Yeah, Esha. So this is not square rooted anymore, so let's put that out to the left as well. Okay. 2 times y to the fifth. 2y to the fifth. Times the square root of 14. 14, and what also should be in that square root? Y. Done. There's our final answer. Box it. Wait. What? You, like, how did you do that? Yeah, someone else answer. How do I it? Go for it. What? So we have 2 times the square root of 14 times y to the power of 5 times the square root of y. So we combine 2 and y to the power of 5, put that on the left side because it's no longer square rooted, and then we combine the square root of 14 and the square root of y to create our final equation. Uh. Uh, question, Jade. Um, so do, do you split up the variables every single time? Every single time, yeah. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say that. Every single time that they're not even. If they're even to begin with, then you don't have to split up anything. I only want to split them up because I wanted this to be an even power. If it's already even, I don't need to split them up. If it's even, I'm ready to convert it into something to the power of 2. That question, Asha. So let's say we had y8. Would we turn that into y 
to the fifth in parentheses two? Or no, no, y to the fourth in parentheses two? Exactly, yes. Yes. Could you have done like two times twenty-eight, like for your first? That's what we did. Two and twenty-eight, like the factor tree, or what do you mean by that? I just use those numbers for your like two and like up there, like I guess have four, two and seven. Yeah. If you use two and eight, like 28. Oh, you only want to use the ends of the branches. So if you look at your factor tree, 28 is an end. It's still kind of like a um, a branch. Um, like you want to leave the look the leaves, I guess, the very ends. This isn't an end because it continues on to the square root of two. So if I use every single part, I would have to use 56. I'd have to use 28. I'd have to use 14. I don't want to use all those numbers. I only want to use the ends. The two, the two, the two, and the seven. All right. Let's try another one. Example number two on the back. If you know how to do it, please do it on your paper. I already did it. If you know how to do that, do example three on your paper. If you've already done that one as well, you may begin on the homework. Um, I need more hands. I need to get everyone in today. Square root of 48a to the power of six. I first needed to do the factor tree. Who's gonna help me with that? Emma? Six and eight. So square root of six and square root of eight. Keep going. Oh yeah. Square root of eight. Um, and then for eight, it'd be square root of two and square root of four. Yeah. Two and four. And then for uh, the square root of two. And then for six, it'd be the square root of six and two. I mean three and two. Square root of three and square root of two. Are you done? Yeah. All right. Nice. All right. Um, let's go ahead and everyone circle our pairs. We have a pair of twos down there. I have a pair of twos right there. And the only end that I haven't used, I'll just kind of box him in green, is that square root of three. So that, I'm circling and boxing all the different ends and pairing them up. So if I multiply all of these different pairs, I really have the, this is gonna be equal to the square root of four, that's that pair right there. I'm gonna multiply that by the square root of four, that's that paired right there. And then I have the square root of three, which I can't really do anything with, so I'm just gonna leave it as a square root of three. Luckily, the square root of four is two, and the square root of four is two, so I know what my next step is gonna be. I'm just making sure, pausing here, making sure we all understand how to get from where I am, or get to where I am now. There's no questions. And Eamon, if you finish the um, examples, you should be on the homework. All right, no questions? All right, now I'm going to multiply this by what? That's no longer a to the power of six. It's gonna somehow change, somehow. Yes, go for it, Kazi. Something squared. A to the three to the two, exactly. Yeah, and then we're, you've set it up perfectly for us, Hazi, so that we can get rid of the two and the square root. Yeah, thank you. I just need someone to basically give me my final answer now. Well, you might need two steps, but it's basically done. Who has it? Is everyone in? Uh, Larissa and Ugo, yeah, so Larissa, go for it. Square root of three, yep. Times a to the Careful here, so the square root or and the square. The there it goes, a to the third. And you wanna just simplify that again first, Larissa? Uh, be four times, times three squared, right? Square root of three. Oh, wait. And we're missing the a to the power of three. And we always leave the non-square roots out front usually and then the square roots out back, out to the right. Uh, yeah, and there's your final answer. Four A to the power of three. Uh, square root of three. Thank you, Larissa. Is that all the square roots? Oh, so you switched, so you, s okay. I switched the order just so that all the non-square roots are out front and all the square roots are out back, oh, to the left so and the right. On example one, 
They weren't all in a square root. It was only 14 in the square root. Right. Yeah, whatever's left in the square root, I just leave in the square root. Because square root of 3 couldn't be done, I can't do anything. I can't do anything to the 2 and the 7. I leave those as a square root of 14. Yeah, so if you can take the square root, if you found a pair, then yeah, make it into a normal number that's a non-square root. All right, and finally, example number three. Ugo, do you want to do the factor tree for 75? Uh, sure. Okay. Ooh, careful, 425 is 100. But 25 is definitely one of them. Not five. How do you get 75 cents out of quarters? How many quarters would you need? Three. There it is, yeah, three. And you could stop right there if you wanted to, or you could keep going. It's up to you, Ugo. What do you want to do? Um, okay. There it is. Square root of five and square root of five. All right, Ugo has our perfect factor tree. And we need to find pairs. So my pairs, I have a pair of five. So if I multiply those together again, I'm going to kind of get back to the square root of 25. It's rewriting this as square root of 25. And then my leftover end of my branch is square root of 3. And then another quite raised hand. Oh, question, Esha. So you could write, though, 5 times 3, correct? 5 times yeah, skipping a step and say, oh, yeah, I already, already know that that's five. Okay. Yep. I love the fact that you guys are seeing ahead and being able to skip steps. And I, I mean, that is the method that I taught yesterday, too. So, um, What about for B? What am I going to do with that B? Quiet raise hand. Anyone can do it. I think everyone's in now. Uh, Charles? Uh, it would be B with one releases and then uh, times square root of B1. Uh, square root of B1. Perfect. All right. Uh, the answer for example two, we got that one. 4a to the power of 3, square root of 3. What is our next step in example number three? Anyone can participate. You're all in. Yes, question, Esha. Um, so, do, when, since 5 can't really be like, we can't make it a second square and like figure out the multiplication, so when that happens, we just separate it and make it be a completely different square root? Yes. Yeah, whenever you have an odd power, you're always going to be left with some random square root of that variable. Okay. Whenever you have an even number, that doesn't happen. Okay. Yeah, good insight. Um, next step, quiet raise hand. I know most people have started on Khan Academy, but I need a few more people to help me solve this problem. Please, yes. Kira? I guess if you go well, 5 times the square root of 3, and, and then... So you can either skip a step here. So the shortcut here is knowing that whenever I have the square root of an even number, just take half of that. Or if you want to show the long way, you can say, yes, this is b to the 2 to the 2 square rooted, which eventually is going to cancel the 2 and the 2, and this is just going to be b squared. So again, the shortcut to get from here to here is always just take half of the exponent. It will get there every single time as long as it is an even power. That is your shortcut. And here's the long way in just one additional step. And we still have that square root of b. All right, last volunteer for today's notes. Who has our final answer? Just squish them all together. Jade, go for it. Yep. And if you put 3b to the first power, sometimes it gives it to you wrong on Khan Academy, so try to leave it as just b. It's a little bit more simple. Yeah, thank you, Jade. Thank you, everyone, for participating. And that concludes our note 7-5. Give me your fist of five for our lesson today, our objective. How well can you factor out both variables and integers? All right, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 3, 5. Amen, what are you at? I got 10. Nice. Charles? Four and Kira. Oh. 
Four. All right, nice. Those are some really high scores.